where do you find life? If you find life where you have liquid water, and that means going to these outer moons. If Europa is the only place in the solar system that has life, and we can find it, that changes philosophically about anything you could imagine, right? That's one of the deepest questions uh, in existence, right? Are we alone? Tech is looking for technology that will allow NASA to explore uh, remote ocean worlds. Europa has an ice cap that is 10 kilometers thick, and underneath that is liquid water ocean. There's a lot of hazards on our way down to the ocean, faulting and, and stuff. So we wanted to think about the communication side to this mission. You know, the channel in which we have to communicate through is ice, it's not air. The ice layer that's very close to the ocean could be very warm and electrically conductive. And therefore, conventional techniques may not work very well. It's really critical to have communication with a probe. If a probe gets down to the ocean, finds life, but it cannot tell us about it, what's the point? So Europa is bathed with astronomically lethal radiation. And not only that, but because it's so far away, it's very cold. So about 93 Kelvin surface temperature with the most wicked radiation in the solar system. So without any exaggeration, the surface of Europa is the most challenging environment to put anything that exists in the solar system. We are one of the research programs that is working on the problem of how to create electronics that will operate in the very harsh environments. So you need electronic equipment that can survive for years in an environment where it is both incredibly cold as well as incredibly radioactive. How do you get through the ice? And this has been a, a constant point of debate. We have attempted uh, several different alternatives for how you get a cryobot through a very deep, thick cryogenic ice cap. My project is maturing technology for Europa probe to cut ice and turn it into a slush. Well, five years from now, certainly, I think that a lot of uh, a lot of the work we're doing now will probably be extended, hopefully, into future missions or future projects that we're going to be doing with NASA. Good science and good engineering isn't just about one solution, one time, one specific case. It's about saying what are a general set of solutions and guidelines that we can develop that will enable us to solve problems 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. Everybody's working on one little piece of it. Okay, but we all have the same vision. We're all sharing the same vision. And we see it as pieces of Lego. They're very big projects, very interdisciplinary. Even though they're hard problems and hard projects, it's a lot of fun when you get a great team together. The thought of actually looking up one day through a telescope and looking at Jupiter and saying, yeah, my stuff, yeah, it's up there on the surface of Europa. That's about the coolest thing I could imagine doing with my life. This is the apex of intellectual development of Homo sapiens to be working on the idea of intelligent robotic systems to actually search for life in our lifetime. This is not science fiction. We're turning science fiction into reality. Hopefully we're gonna find some uh, whales or something, you know. 